Last week, we kicked off a brand new Christmas series called Jingle Jangle. We've actually been taking uh, three songs. We're taking a look at three songs from this Netflix movie. In case you missed it last week or if you haven't seen the movie for yourself, here's a Cliff Notes version of uh, or summary of what it is. The movie is about an inventor by the name of Geronicus, but he's betrayed in the movie by his apprentice, Gustafsson. Uh, with Gustafsson, he steals his plans. He steals his book of inventions and ideas. And this brings Geronicus down a really dark path and losing uh, his inventing magic, the magic that fueled you know, all of his inventions. Uh, that is until his granddaughter comes into the picture. And when she does, she helps restore the magic, which is fueled by belief, faith, and wonder. Rewatching this movie really helped me think about something. You know, when it comes to Christmas, you usually relate the holiday to bright colors, right? It's like, it's a very bright, very cheerful, a very happy, colorful holiday. This helps you feel all these different types of emotions, you know, emotions of happiness and joy, contentment and gratitude. You think about family, you think about laughter. Usually you think about happy memories when you think about Christmas. You know, I asked Hunter's mom if she had any pictures of Hunter when he was little that would help me portray this idea of the joy that the holiday brings. And she sent me this picture. She sent me this baby picture of, uh, of little Hunter on Santa's lap. You see how happy he looks in this picture? That's Christmas in a nutshell, if you ask me. You know, as followers of Jesus, we have a special reason to celebrate Christmas. We have an additional reason to be joyful as we remember and celebrate the birth of Jesus. This plays an even more important significance than all the other stuff that we do during the holiday, such as the parties, such as the gifts, and such as the food. But if we could be serious for just a moment, I think we'd all agree that there's a dark side. There's a a dark side that we can miss or that we can be overcome by if we're not careful. Let me give you guys some examples. During this holiday season, when does the transition happen from giving and receiving gifts to materialism? And vanity, or just unwise money management and spending, getting into debt and giving outlandish gifts? When does the transition happen from a family get-together and time with friends and eating together, eating good food? When does the transition happen to bottled up resentment and, and bitterness and something that that family member did to you or said to you a few months ago or that unforgiveness that you hold in your heart? When does that transition happen? Or when does the transition happen from shopping and planning events and and attending parties to being stressed out and being overwhelmed, being overworked and literally pulling your hair out? When does that transition happen? You see, there's a thief that wants to steal something from you this Christmas. No, it's not the Grinch trying to steal your tree or trying to steal your presents. It's actually something that's way more valuable than that. Today's clip from Jingle Jangle, I think, is going to help us realize that there's a Christmas thief that doesn't want to steal gifts. He wants to steal your joy. Working with our main character, Geronicus, was his apprentice by the name Gustafsson, who would later be known as Magic Manji. He's disgruntled with his boss because Geronicus hasn't really been giving him the attention that he thinks he deserves. And so he's presented with an opportunity to leave the shadow of Geronicus and to become a household name all by himself. All he needs to do is borrow Geronicus' book of inventions. He takes a little convincing, however. Check out this clip, which explains it right here. In this scene, Geronicus' invention convinces Gustafsson to betray him and to steal all of his ideas. And just like that, all of Geronicus' fortunes, his big plans, his prosperity, it all goes downhill. This was supposed to be his big breakthrough, but he goes from being happy and celebratory to down in the pits. When we view this scene through a spiritual lens, I think we can draw a lot of similarities. Christmas time is supposed to be a joyful and a happy and prosperous time of year. Isn't that what all the songs at the department store say? But there's something lurking in the shadows that is attempting to steal your joy. And this is something that we actually see in the Christmas narrative in the scriptures. When we read the Christmas story in the Bible, you know, rightfully, we focus on the miraculous birth of Jesus and we celebrate the arrival of Christ. We marvel at the worship of 
of, of uh, the, the angels, you know, uh, and, and the shepherds and the gifts of the wise men and the faith of Mary and Joseph. We celebrate all of that. But the truth is that there is a whole other side to the story. In this passage that we're about to read, Jesus is born. The miracle has happened, but there is a plot that is brewing behind the scenes. So Joseph is actually warned by an angel. And this is what happens. Check it out in the book of Matthew chapter 2. After they were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Get up, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and escaped to Egypt. He stayed there until Herod's death, so that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. There's two things that I want us to remember from this passage that we just read. And number one is that a joy thief is on the prowl. And I'm not trying to be all doom and gloom here. I'm just trying to be real with you guys. You need to understand that as God and his angels are real, so is Satan and his demons. And their sole purpose is to destroy you. Perhaps you've overlooked this part of the Christmas narrative, but our spiritual enemy was present at the birth of Jesus. He was stirring in the heart of Herod. He was adding fuel to the flames of envy and hatred. And what followed was death, destruction, chaos, murder, and envy. I bet you don't hear that too often in the Christmas story, do you? But it was there. Check out what Matthew goes on to say. Then Herod, when he realized that he had been outwitted by the wise men, he flew into a rage. He gave orders to massacre all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, in keeping with the time he had learned from the wise men. Then what was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and she refused to be consoled because they were, because they are no more. Did you guys know that surrounding the birth of Jesus was the, the mass murder of little Jewish baby boys and toddlers. The families had no say in the matter. The children were ripped away from them, all because of what? Because of a selfish, jealous king. But behind that, truly why? This act of Herod was straight up demonic. His plot was inspired by Satan himself, who the Bible says has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Hidden behind this glorious and joyous event, the birth of Jesus was the enemy attempting to rip joy right out. Guys, you need to understand this. Your spiritual enemy is attempting to suck joy out of your life. This Christmas, this week, today even, there will be a temptation to remove your eyes away from the celebration of Christ and onto your problems. There will be the temptation to take your eyes off of that valuable time with your family and onto that time that you were double-crossed or that time they said that thing about you. There will be a temptation to take your eyes off of giving and receiving gifts and onto fulfilling every selfish desire in your body to look this way or to have the latest thing just so that you can be relevant, so that you can wrap your meaning, your purpose, and your identity in that thing. But here's the truth. The reality is that things don't always go the way that we want. The reality is that we face real problems, serious sickness, real financial struggles. This is the real world. These are real problems that we face. Your spiritual enemy wants to exploit that so that you can take your eyes off of Christ. He wants you to focus on your problems, your difficulties, your challenges, and this is exactly what he wants to do to you this Christmas. But you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to fear. Because here's what you need to be aware of. Number two, Jesus brings joy. Jesus not only brings us joy, but he is the source of joy. And joy is something that supersedes circumstances. It, it goes beyond what you're feeling and what's going on around you. The Bible says that you can receive a joy that surpasses all understanding. And when the angels announced to the shepherds the coming of the Messiah, the birth of Jesus, look at what they said in Luke chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. 
Then an angel of the Lord stood before the shepherds and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. You know, if you continue to read this passage, you'll realize that the the good news of great joy is Jesus. It's the birth of the Messiah. The great joy is connected to Jesus. And we need this reminder this season. Our enemy is attempting to, to, to take your focus, to take our focus off of Jesus, because if he is successful, he can attack your joy. But Jesus is who ultimately brings joy. In Jesus, you find life. In Jesus, you find purpose. In Jesus, you find meaning. Jesus changes your whole identity and brings you joy. In what ways? In what ways does Jesus bring joy? Well, let me share with you what is so great about this good news. The good news of great joy that was heralded by the angels. It meant three things. First, that Jesus was born. The Messiah that was promised in Scripture, the prophecies that were foretold, were finally, finally came to fruition in Jesus. It was no longer this long-distance relationship between God and man in Jesus. God made his dwelling among man. God drew near to mankind. Secondly, Jesus' birth would ultimately lead to Jesus living a righteous and sinless life, one that we are incapable of living. Jesus' birth would ultimately lead to his death as the perfect sinless lamb of God who would atone for our sin. The wages of sin is death, according to the Bible. Our sin merits God's wrath and judgment. But because of Jesus, instead we receive mercy and forgiveness. Thirdly, the good news is that not only Jesus died, but that Jesus has power over Satan, sin, and death. The proof is in the fact that Jesus conquered the grave, that the tomb is empty. You know, scholars and historians have have had a tough time trying to figure out which tomb Jesus could have laid in. They've narrowed it down to a couple potential locations. The reason they have a hard time and the reason that it is challenging is because he is no longer there. He is risen. And this is good news because not only is he able to forgive us of sin, but he grants us eternity and he gives us a new life. Not just a new life in heaven, which is true, but a new life right now. Look at what John chapter 10 verse 10 says. In fact, I encourage you guys to read this with me. Ready, go. A thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Here's something that we don't celebrate nearly enough as Christians. The life in abundance is certainly an eternal life in the presence of God. But Jesus' joy brings us an abundant life right now. And I need you to hear this carefully. I'm not talking about a life free of trouble or a life free of strife. But instead, his joy is what sustains us in these tumultuous times. You know, I believe we don't talk about this nearly enough or fully understand. And maybe that's why there's so many Christians walking around grumpy and upset all the time. You know, always talking about the world is going to end. Perhaps you've met some. I'm sorry if you have. But Jesus is good news of great joy. My sins are forgiven. My eternity is secure which means that I don't have to find my identity in things or circumstances or my past. My identity is in Christ. And because this is true, I know that I'm loved. I know that I'm known. I know that my sin debt is paid so that I can have joy. And so can you. Don't allow the enemy to whisper in your ear like Jeronicus' invention did to Gustafsson. Don't allow the enemy to steal your joy this Christmas. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's worship Jesus. And if you're watching this today, you're joining us at Church Online, and you're not a follower of Jesus, you too can experience this joy, the joy of salvation. All you need to do is put your faith in Him, and I invite you to do so right now. Let's pray together. Lord, we know that a joy thief is on the prowl. So I pray, God, that you would keep us safe and help us keep our eyes fixed on you. Jesus, you bring us joy. And so we worship you. We remember you. Jesus, would you take your rightful place in our lives and restore unto us joy. Regardless of our circumstances, regardless of what we're going through right now, Lord, I pray that we may experience a joy that surpasses all understanding. We pray this in Jesus' name.
Amen.